Hello again, everybody. I'm Roger Hoover. Glad to welcome you back to the Crimson Tide Sports Network Facebook page. It's time to talk some Alabama volleyball as we're joined by the head coach of the Crimson Tide, Lindsey Devine, for Lindsey Devine Live. And it's brought to you by Alabama One Credit Union, a proud supporter of Crimson Tide Women's Athletics. Coach Devine, roll tide. How's everything going? Everything's great, Roger. Thanks for having me on this week. Pre- really appreciate the what you do for us and, and do for Alabama. So thank you. Well, we're glad to talk some Crimson Tide volleyball as you guys were able to hit the road for the first time this season. Uh, what can you tell us about the weekend you all had in Gainesville? Well, we knew that coming into this uh, this match with Florida, it was going to be a tough match. Uh, Florida is, uh, you know, from top to bottom, their players very disciplined and uh, seem to have a, a great understanding of how to work through adversity. So, um, but I was so proud of the way that our girls responded. You know, I, I mean, you look at scores and you look at if you were to watch the live stats as the um, the sets w- were in, we were playing. You know, there were so many great moments that we were able to capitalize and certainly put uh, Florida into um, a, a moment or into times when they weren't feeling too comfortable. So. Uh, we as a, a staff and as a team really looked at that and then carried it into the second night. So, so many positives to take away from this opportunity. Yeah, looking back at those scores, like you mentioned, so many of those sets were into the 20s. Alabama was right there. You got to be really pleased seeing the way your team competed in so many moments. For sure. You know, we talk about, you know, bringing over, I guess, the analogy from being in the red zone like football talks <laughs> about. And that's the time when we got to play with consistency. And uh, I think our, our, our team understood, they understand the importance of that, that they got to play disciplined and clean and, and the essential things that we talk about every day in practice. Those are really, really important when you're in the red zone. And um, I think we, we demonstrated that. It's just now we got to stretch out those times so that we have that consistency a lot longer than, um, than just the short amount of times that we saw throughout the match. Once again, a lot of kills by Abby Margemo. What can you tell us about some of the swings she took and going up against a complicated Florida defense and a very good one? Sure. You know, we we know that Abby and we've talked to her a lot that, hey, you're going to carry a lot of load. So you got to you first recognize that and you're going to have to work hard to uh, to to transition in those moments. And because she is a pretty composed uh, opponent, you know, a composed uh, player, she comes into these matches. She has she understands the scouting report. And um, I think she really implements the stuff that we talk about daily in practice. So, uh, yes, a lot of swings like she came and walked away over the weekend with, you know, 23 kills for the weekend, but took uh, about 72 swings. That's a lot of swings for that shoulder, but Abby can handle it. She certainly can. And what can you tell us about the setting you all received against the Gators? Yeah, you know, Riley, I think Riley continues to um, do a really uh, great part for our team. Um, She's getting more comfortable and, and, you know, having setting the expectations for the passers, talking about that she wants that ball to drop on her head. So then she's able to move efficiently out to get to the ball. So I think the, the set distribution, uh, we followed the scouting report that we wanted. Uh, and, um, you know, at times she was able to kind of clean up some, a little bit of confusion because of our pass. Uh, so, um, you know, I just really love how much she's just coming into her own and really feeling comfortable and, again, connecting and finding ways for our attackers to feel uh, success. One player we haven't talked a lot about this season so far is Madeline St. Germain. She was able to lead you in the second match in digs. What have you been seeing from her? Uh, Mads. Mads is just a, she's a competitor, and uh, she has that calm composure on the team. She knows what to say in the right moments. It's from her maturity, her experience. And then you add to that, as I said, her competitiveness. Um, and, you know, at the end of the match, I always like to have the opportunity to talk to the opponent's uh, head coach and say, you know, um, you know, I obviously give my um, uh, compliments to them because I think it's important for them to for them to know about their team. But uh, Mary Wise, who, as we know, is a uh, certainly a legend in the volleyball world, but she came across and she talked about um, and gave some really great compliments about our team. But she highlighted about Madeline. Uh, loves her energy, her effort, and these are all the things that we talk about every day to, to Madeline. Um, so um, to, to have another coach recognize all that great work, I, I think that just says huge about where she is and what she does for our program. 
You guys have spent so much time inside Foster Auditorium, whether it's the summer or kind of a prolonged fall getting ready for this season. What was it like traveling for the first time and going to Gainesville and seeing the protocols they have in place? Well, you know, it comes back to Alabama, our medical staff here, our trainer, Kara Sims. Uh, Alabama has done such a great job to um, instill that into our players so that when we went to a different state, we still followed those same protocols and our players still felt safe uh, because it was just part of the routines that we've been doing over and over. So it wasn't anything outside of the norm. Um, and uh, we, we, again, just attributed back that it's kind of like business as usual. Yeah, we take what we do here in Foster. We go to another place. Uh, we didn't want to kind of sensationalize it, make it crazy for them. So um, I really believe that our players felt, hey, this is just another venue and we're, we're here to play volleyball. Certainly are. And now, once again, you get to go on the road. You get ready to take on uh, the Georgia Bulldogs. And they split a couple matches last week against Tennessee. What can you tell us about them? Uh, you know, Georgia is pretty, um, uh, right now, trying to figure out some rotations. And so, in, in the scouting that we have done so far, we see a lot of players kind of moving through their uh, lineup. One player that's pretty consistent is uh, Strivens, an outdoor, outside player uh, that uh, just transferred from Louisville. So um, she will be certainly one player that we will uh, try to make do a lot of work from passing to creating um, a wall in front of her when she swings. So she's got to think about some things. We're going to probably serve her. So she's going to have to, again, work in the back row for her team. So that would be one player that we're going to certainly um, put our focus on. And speaking of focus, what's this week of preparation look like for your volleyball team? And then anything different with Election Day coming up tomorrow? So we talk about cleanup and um, our outsides have to be kind of like garbage collectors because they don't necessarily always get the perfect sets. Uh, in most cases, when a, a really good ball is passed into the setter, they want to get their middles um, involved. So our, our outsides, our pins are, under, are learning to understand that it may not be pretty, but you got to be able to do something with it. And it may not always come from the setter. So they got to be able to get enough depth be able to open up to the court so that they can uh, receive that ball from our defensive people. So uh, that's been one of our focuses is to for our pins to get a lot of swings, understanding how to increase their range. Um, I really was a proud of how we uh, came out onto the court versus Florida with our serve game. And that was another thing that we held them uh, under a two point uh, system, which was really good for uh, a serve game for us. So that was great. So we're going to again be back on that service line and serve with the confidence. Uh, so that's a, a, certainly another thing that we're going to continue to emphasize. And then the last thing would be just we got to be a little um, simpler on our defense. You know, we kind of added a little bit of an extra movement and we don't want that to happen. So steady feet, calmness and um, just keep everything simple and good things are going to happen from that. And I'll then wait. as far as election day tomorrow, it's uh, no Kara. Uh, so we can't have anything going on. We've encouraged we're 100 um, percent enrolled for our, our team to go out to vote. So proud of it. Aaliyah Wells has been one that's just kind of put uh, things in, uh, making sure that all the opportunities for our young ladies to, uh, to have the opportunity to vote. Alabama's done that also. Uh, so we are excited that not only will they get to go vote, they get to rest, come back in on Wednesday for a, another great day of practice. Well, that's certainly good to hear. Well, best of luck coming up this week, getting ready for the matches coming up in Athens. And then we can't wait to see you all back at home inside Foster in a couple of weeks against LSU. But Coach Devine, just roll tide. Thank you for your time today. Of course. Thanks, Roger. Roll tide. Roll tide. Well, thanks to Coach Devine. Thank all of you for watching Lindsay Devine Live here on the Crimson Tide Sports Network.